Hey, it's Tim Miller with The Bulwark. Today, we have the actual transcript that was the basis of the special counsel report. You remember the one that said that Joe Biden was a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory? It was done by this guy, Robert Hur, a Republican. And it turns out, when you look at the transcript, that Robert Hur was not being straight with us about what actually happened in this conversation. Let's back up here and take a look at it together. The most controversial claim that he made, the one that sparked Joe Biden's anger uh, in his late night press conference in response to the report a couple weeks ago, her uh, wrote that the president couldn't recall in an interview with the prosecutors the date when his adult son, Bo, died of cancer. Well, it turns out when you look at the actual transcript that he did remember the date. Exactly right. Uh, here it is. What month did Bo die? He asked. Oh, God, May 30th, he said, naming the correct day. And then two others in the room chimed in with the year, and Biden questioned, was it 2015 when he died? Yeah, it was 2015. So, you know, okay, I, I mean, I guess uh, it's, it seemed like a guy that was trying to get the timeline right. I mean, I don't know about you, but I can't remember what day I, you know, ate what for dinner. Like, it's, uh, forget what year, what was I doing in 2015? Who knows? It's going to take me a minute to figure it out. Uh, but dude pulled the exact date that his son died. Um, the other thing that is the really big takeaway for me when you read the entire transcript, which I, which I would recommend if you're interested in it, um, is this conversation he has with her is a lot more nuanced than how it was portrayed in that special counsel report. It was a dynamic conversation. There's a lot of joking. Um, at times it's very serious. At times it's casual. Uh, Joe Biden is shown to be somebody with a pretty quick wit at times. Her is showing him old pictures. Um, and in one of the pictures, Biden looks at it and says, that must be an old one because I got my arm around Lindsey Graham, making a joke about that. Biden goes on tangents where he's telling him stories about a time he went to Mongolia in 2011 and was shooting a bow and arrow. They have a lengthy exchange about cars where Biden is, is talking about how awesome the torque is on electric cars these days and, and how they they don't have a reputation for you know being as as badass as they are and and her is her is kind of taken back by that when you look at the transcript he's like whoa that is interesting so uh you know i this it, this was not like a conversation between a hard-nosed lawyer and an elderly person in a senior home when he's like saying hey grandpa can you remember what date it was that you know you graduated from college i that's how he tried to make it out in the report and the transcript reveals that that wasn't the case at all. Um, you know, I think that there, obviously, like anything else, there's some things, you know, that Biden is a little fuzzy on. Um, you know, for example, in that press conference, he rants at her about asking him about Bo. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. When that isn't really what happened, like kind of what happened was that Joe Biden volunteered um, uh, when he was trying to get his bearings on the timeline about whether that was something that happened when Bo had recently died or was about to die. And he's like, when did he die? It says May, May 30th. So he has the date right. Uh, but, um, you know, kind of exactly how that interview went, um, you know, he, he sort of fumbles the details on that a little bit. But even still, this is a five hour interview. It's happening the day after the Hamas terror attack in Israel. Um, he has a lot on his plate. Um, he's going back and forth with this special counsel for a long time. And uh, the transcript reveals somebody that is, is casual, has command of the facts, maybe doesn't remember where he put the fucking boxes in his garage or why he put a, something in a blue folder versus a yellow folder. But I don't know. It's probably because he didn't do it. Like his staff, he had staff. He was the vice president for eight years and then... Uh, now he's been the president. So, you know, I, it's kind of absurd to I, ask him the particulars of when a box was placed where and, and you know, have him, expect him to remember exactly how that went. Uh, the other interesting takeaway, just as an aside about this transcript, is uh, Biden is very adamant about his rightness when it comes to Afghanistan. And you got to almost maybe give the guy credit for this one. Um, a lot of these exchanges uh, center around 
uh, his conversations with President Obama because some of these documents are notes from that time when he was arguing to Obama that he should have been drawing down from Afghanistan earlier. He was a rare voice inside the administration for doing that. And so, you know, you can sense that there's like this little bit of pride with Biden that he's like, this is something that I was right about. It ended up becoming a, you know, total cluster uh, for decades that we were in Afghanistan. And, and Biden was the one arguing um, that, you know, maybe this wasn't the best use of resources. Maybe there wasn't a smart long-term plan here. On the other hand, Obama points to Obama on getting the Osama bin Laden raid, right? Points to Biden on kind of the long-term strategic planning on this. But, you know, you get a sense for a person in this interview that is uh, – uh, engaged in policy disputes that is pretty knowledgeable, that is speaking coherently about policy, something that his opponent is totally incapable of doing. And, um, you know, it also at times is fudging, you know, when exactly stuff happens. Uh, and so, I, you know, again, if, if her had wanted to, you know, make a sentence about that in the report, okay. But to frame this whole report around the fact that, you know, he didn't think that he could prosecute Biden because he comes off as somebody who is elderly and incapable of remembering what happened is just uh, totally false, has been revealed to be a total scam. And uh, Robert Hur is now testifying today and is going to have to defend himself uh, from these false accusations. In your investigation, did you find that President Biden directed his lawyer to lie to the FBI? We identified no such evidence. Did you find that President Biden directed his lawyer to destroy classified documents? No. Did you find that President Biden directed his personal assistant to move boxes of documents to hide them from the FBI? No. Did you find that President Biden directed his personal assistant to delete security camera footage after the FBI asked for that footage? No. Did you find that President Biden showed a classified map related to an ongoing military operation to a campaign aide who did not have clearance? No. Did you find that President Biden engaged in a conspiracy to obstruct justice? No. Did you find that President Biden engaged in a scheme to conceal? No. Each of the activities I just laid out describe what Donald Trump did in his willful mishandling of classified information and his criminal efforts to deceive the FBI. In contrast, President Biden handed over documents without delay and complied fully with investigators. Hey, if you like this video and our content, I'd love for you to become a Bulwark Plus member. You get bonus podcasts, uh, you get bonus newsletters, you get bonus takes from me that maybe don't come up on the YouTube feed. Um, you can try it out for free at thebulwark.com slash free trial. The link is below in the description. Uh, we'd love to have you as a member of our community. Uh, we have great commenters and uh, great opportunities for people who want to protect democracy.